Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment to pull yourself back from the keyboard and listen up. I've got my friend Agnieszka here from Ahead Coach. Agnieszka, this market has been unique to say the least, but at the end of the day, when we're talking about a market, we are fundamentally talking about people. It does not matter if you're talking about algorithms, TNA, long-term, short-term. At the end of the day, somebody coded the principles with an algorithm. Somebody decided to sign up for the brokerage account to get within the market, and somebody decided to make a reaction on the news. But that's not the main point of all of this. The main point is how do these traders continue to work within the market and not only allow volatility within the market, but volatility within themselves? How do they, from your experience, how do people not take things personally when at the end of the day, it is an ultimate matter of choice and living with those choices. What are your thoughts? I know it's a deep way to get things started, but what are your I don't thoughts? know. It's, it's a great way. And yeah, the, the answer is it is actually almost impossible for you to take things not personally when you feel they are happening to you, right? And when you step into the market and you put your own money and you put a lot of effort and time and you really want it because you have this ultimate goal that you want to achieve, it just becomes all very personal. It just feels like your results is something about you. Whatever you get out of the market at whatever money you lose, that you are putting your own self-worth at stake. And that is the biggest thing that stands traders uh, in the way to achieve results, but mostly to focus on the process. So really take themselves out of the equation and put themselves aside and say, okay, this is the game. And if I want to play it, I am nobody here, right? But the ego is the part that says, yeah, but you, but you, but I want it, but I, I made a mistake. So it's my, you know, it's my fault. I, I am to blame. And the moment that you start using or overusing the word I in this game, that's where things can start to be very personally personal because you just simply will be putting yourself um, as a cause of everything that happens, right? And it will make you very happy when you make money, but it will make you miserable when you lose it. When you say, it's my fault, I'm stupid, I lost money, I am not good at this, I will never make it. And that kind of brings you into the down downward spiral where you start victimizing yourself and feeling blame and shame and guilt and all these negative emotions that are absolutely not helping you to start looking from a subjective, uh, from the objective perspective, from, from a distance to what is actually happening there. What happened? Why am I, why did I take a loss? Where, where did that go wrong? So that brings on the question as well. When it comes to understanding, I'll say the it of a trader on this, in your opinion, is it better for somebody to be numb to all actions within trading, both positive and negative? Or do you think they should be more optimistic into things? What are your thoughts? And in my personal example of this, I almost believe someone should be about 90% numb to both ups and downs. It's good to give yourself a little bit of a party when you have a really good move. But at the end of the day, it is your job and nothing more to follow your process, to follow through with things. Maybe I'm being a little bit pessimistic on stuff there and a little bit of a hard ass on it. But what are your thoughts when it comes to working in this profession for that? Yeah, I think I think what is really important is to make a split between being optimistic or being happy about your results or unhappy about your results and taking things personally. Because you see, to me, there are two different things. When you have good results, of course, you can be happy. You can be happy about your success. But now if you are taking it so personally that you think, okay, this makes me a better person because I have this good result, 
this is really says something about me as a human being. Now you are merging these two and now you cannot take, take the distance from your good result. And now you feel invincible and you go overboard. Now you start over trading. Now you think, oh, now I'm all that and I can make all these good trades and I'm, I'm going to double up, right? My size. Now, if you can keep that split, you are more prone to look at the pros and say, okay, I did this good. It feels good. I'm happy about this. What did I, like, where am I on my emotional scale in terms of happy, right? So still being, um, being detached from the result, knowing, okay, my ultimate goal is a long-term success, not just this one big gain that I just got. Yeah, it's going great, which that's why, you know, I'm working for it to go great. So I cannot be surprised if it's going great. I can only be surprised that it's going great if I was expecting myself to not go good, right? If I don't follow the process and suddenly I have a great result, that means that I probably broke my rules and I'm just lucky, <laughs> right? But, and if I'm happy about that, imagine you have a, you broke your rules, right? And you were lucky, you got a great result. Now, if you are very detached to the result, uh, or from if you detach from the result, you know actually that you're screwed, right? You, you did something wrong. You broke your rules. So you, you, your feeling is not, oh, I'm happy with the money. Your feeling is, this is great, but I know that this is not something I can be doing because this is going to bring me in trouble, right? Which automatically will put you more distant and looking from more objective perspective. Now, if you are happy about that, most likely it will turn against you at some point, right? And then you will take it very personally because that's where this uh, attachment happens. Does that make sense? It I'll does. It does. That. And if I interject on that too, I'd like to take the opposite side of that idea where the, we see many individuals that they get into trading, they get into working with this, and they hit a slump overall. Mm -hmm. When we look at the hard numbers on statistics, even if you are 60% accurate, you're still going to have 40% of those trades to go against you on there. So many people allow their mentality to become stuck, to become sticky to that 40% of the bad, and they develop a defeatist mentality on themselves. I do not deserve this. I am not a company to having any type of success. And they seem to die a death of a thousand cuts within their account because they're either cutting runners too long or they're manifesting a bad trust within a proven system. Talk to me a little bit on that. How does A, somebody avoid creating a defeatist mentality and B, if they're already there and thankfully they've listened in on our discussion, how do they start to take the baby steps to get out of yeah. that mentality in order to gain towards a progressive mindset within themselves and their abilities? I think one very quick tip that you can do right now and start immediately that will change your whole experience is stop talking to yourself on the identity level. This is purely your inner talk. And as you mentioned, how they say, I am not worth the success. I am this, I am stupid, I am that, right? It's everything that goes with I am, it's your identity level. Start directing your thoughts on the behavior. I haven't done this right. I have done something stupid. Everything that you talk to yourself about in terms of trading, do not push yourself down by saying that it says something about you as a person. Talk about what you did. Because remember that it is always much easier to change the behavior than who you are. And you are a good person and you are putting all these efforts into something that you really want to make work. So just think about it. How would you talk to your friend? If your friend comes to you and says, you know what, I really, you know, th this didn't really go well and I am so in trouble right now. I mean, what is the chance that you would start calling him names and tell him how stupid he is and that, you know, he should be giving up every every effort he's uh, he's putting in. So 
start being your friend and stop calling, stop talking to yourself on that identity level. You will see that it will change your experience. And in the long term, it will take your focus away from your self-worth towards the process and what you can change in your behavior in order to move forward. Now, when you are in that circle and you're like, oh, I just don't know how to get out of it, that's the first step, right? Second tip is remember that things are happening for you and not to you. And most likely, if you keep repeating the same mistake, you haven't learned a lesson yet. So start looking at what is it that you keep repeating? What kind of mistake, what kind of behavior do you keep uh, manifesting in your trading? And is this something uh, based on your expectation? Maybe you have unrealistic expectations. Maybe you are trading on an intraday um, level, you know, on one or five minute chart and, and you have decided about your targets on a daily chart, right? <laughs> that, it could be that simple, but there is really necess necessity to look at your process and see if there is something in there that is actually putting you in trouble. But you will not be able to see that if you just put the mirror back to you and, and you know, think there is something wrong with me. Remember, trading is not easy and it does require a lot of analysis. It's about patterns, you know, and, and you have to know your patterns, like within what patterns are you moving, right, in your behavior? Are you repeating something consistently that makes your results in consistently bad, right? Because if you want to have consistently good results, there is also a way you just have to have a consistent good behavior. So just by analyzing and looking at yourself, just like you would at the at sort of a case, right? Say, okay, so this, this is me, right? This is the case. What am I doing? What is it that I keep repeating? And what in that behavior, what is that trigger? What is the thing that is really needed to be changed? Because I can assure you, it's not everything. Like it's that. not that you do everything wrong. There's a lot that you do good. And it's really important that you will also give yourself credit for that. Humans themselves tend to prefer a group mentality as, as an average overall. We focused a lot on the eyes of this, but how do we add a we component to this? How does somebody find a good group to be able to reflect this information on that is a good constructive group. A lot of people, they find a group, but they just want to fit in. So maybe they'll fudge their details a little bit here, that and the other. Uh, an example of this, I had a student at one point that did not disclose that they were working uh, with their kid's college fund to trade on that one. So they were taking excessive risk with money. Now, to be quite frank, they really could not afford to lose, but in order to fit in with the group, they mm -hmm. decided to say that it was money. How do people avoid this form fitting into a group? And even more so, how do they identify a good group for them that is on their level to allow them to be able to reflect that information in a much more positive aspect to facilitate growth overall as a trader and as an individual to help uplift everyone else? In my opinion, before you join any group, I think you need to find the confidence and the strength within yourself before you can do that. Because if you don't feel that you know what you're looking for, you know exactly um, who you are as a trader. And I mean really inside, because, you know, it's very easy when you join a group, it's very easy to look at others and start comparing yourself. Now, the very first step to, uh, to find who you are as a trader and the very first step to actually follow your own growth, follow your own path, is to start to become your own competitor, to start comparing yourself to yourself, to set your goals and to follow the timing for yourself. If you don't have that strength yet and you join a group, 
it'll be very easy to be pulled into um, comparing yourself to others and, you know, to ruminating thoughts, to, to trying to maybe make silly decisions about your capital and um, maybe even like hide, the, hide from yourself the things that you don't like to see just simply by comparison. Um, and in any group, you simply just don't know what's on the other side, right? People tend not to share <laughs> the things they don't want others to see, right? I think the, the if you are looking for a group, the big part is vulnerability. To have the sort of, you know, a check, if you join any group to see how vulnerable people are in that group, because vulnerability is very important in the market for you as a trader, because you have to, and it's not a weakness, right? It's strength. And I know that a lot of times people think vulnerability is a weakness, but if you don't have vulnerability, how are you going to be willing to get into the market and be willing to take a loss, right? Not to fight against it. Because we expose ourselves to pain every single day. Every time you take a trade, you take into account that you might get slapped by the market, right? For not doing anything wrong, just simply by making a decision. And okay, it might be a wrong decision, right? And you have to be able to stand in your shoes and say, okay, I just move on. Now, if you are looking for a group and when there is no vulnerability, if you see people only taking profits and only having fantastic days, um, you can ask yourself whether this is actually realistic, right? Because that might actually pull you in the wrong direction in thinking what a loser I am. Because nobody is losing but me. And you know what the next step is. Well, if everyone is winning there, let me try to trade what they trade. And now you're going into that circle where you actually, you have no idea what you're doing and you may be risking your, your money on, on some trades you're not even having a plan for. So that kind of brings in that, you know, it brings you on the wrong path. I think you have to have a very strong focus on what's my path. And from there, you can start building relationships or group relationships. I like it. I like it. And speaking of a path, uh, you guys just launched a new do-it-yourself program on that. Would you mind touching on that just a little bit and uh, give course. a little bit of sneak peek? With pleasure. So, you know, I, I have always like wanted to make it more approachable to work with me. And I know that not everyone can do that within my one-on-one program, which is quite extensive. And not everyone is ready yet to make a big transformation, but still would like to make first steps, right? To at least find out like, what are my uh, patterns. So where am I sabotaging myself? So I launched this do-it-yourself course, which is a series of four classes. And additionally, I give a bonus uh, three-hour class uh, that is talking about alignment, aligning your expectations with your beliefs uh, that helps you to align with your intention to trade for a living. And this total nine hours of classes uh, are available for an instant access. And then we have fantastic 4th of July, 40% off a discount for anyone who wants to sign up for that. There's also an option to upgrade with three months um, coaching, group coaching from me. So for a fantastic price. So check it out. It will be on my website, aheadcoach.com starting tonight and all the way to 4th of July. So make sure you check it out at least so you can give yourself a fair chance to succeed. You know, I was told something a long time ago. Sometimes the best thing you can do is buy a ticket in the room. And I think right now a program like this is something that if you are struggling and just be honest with yourself, you don't have to tell anybody else, just be honest with you. If you are struggling, not just with your trading, but getting that little next step forward to get yourself on a good path, you need a mentor overall. I highly recommend Anisha on this because you need someone that's level-headed and willing to look at you, look you in the eye and go, look, you are messing up, but this is how 
We're going to achieve this goal to get over those hills that you're coming into. So I love it. Agnieszka, if people want to learn more about what you have going on, or if they want to keep track of uh, some of the other interviews and things you're doing on social media, how can they keep a hold of you? So follow me on Twitter. That's where I advertise all my new podcast episodes. So that's uh, Coach Your Head, the same on Instagram, Coach Your Head. And of course, I'm on Facebook under Agnieszka Wood. Um, and feel free to reach out anytime. I am really easily approachable. Um, just send me a message or uh, on a, or an email. I always take time to to respond because I find it really important that I can help you guys um, and bring you a step further on your journey. So, thank you, Creed. I appreciate that. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, relevant links in the description below. Never be afraid to comment on these videos asking questions. And we're more than happy to have discussions around that as well. But for right now, check out those descriptions below. Agnieszka, thank you for giving another point of view on the market and being a wealth of knowledge. I look forward to talking with you again on the next one. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.